خير وبارك الله فيك بارك الله فيكم that's more like it Alhamdulillah what a great way to start this event with the Quran بارك الله فيكم to our beloved Sheikh that's come down all the way from Oman our next speaker is the man that's been dodging kangaroos for a while it's a man that's been swimming away from the great white sharks of Australia Allahumma barik he specializes in addiction some of our addictions as we know is very is harmful to us and he also specializes in other addiction, which I know many people. <laughs> this is not meant to happen, by the way, yeah? I don't know why. I love you too, Sheikh, yeah? Do you know why the Sheikh's here? Because for the past two events, I've got his name wrong. If I get his name wrong right now, I'm about to get a Spartan boot off the stage. So, Bismillah, without further ado, our beloved Sheikh, Wa'il Ibrahim. Wa'il Ibrahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I didn't hear anything Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh much better, mashallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rabbi shrahli sadri, wa yassilli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana, innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I wanted to share with you today, inshallah ta'ala, one dua where the Prophet ﷺ told the companions and us after them very beautiful words. And in that dua, in the conclusion of that dua, he told us whoever heard it must learn it. So if you never heard about that dua before this night, your homework, your job is to memorize it inshaAllah ta'ala, grab it from the internet, make it your homework inshaAllah ta'ala. Is that a promise? I can't hear anything. Birmingham, is that a promise? Yeah. Allah Akbar, ta'ala. In that dua, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ made a promise. In that dua, the Prophet ﷺ made a promise that anyone recites it will not feel depressed or anxious or sad anymore. That doesn't mean that you will not experience the sadness, rather, you'll be able to cope with those emotions better. And as you have seen in the past some years now, people are talking about mental illnesses, depression, anxiety, and so on, where the Prophet ﷺ, whom we believe was sent from high by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the final messenger, brought to us this news. Now, whosoever recites it will not feel depressed again. But the other command that he gave is that whoever heard it must learn it. What is that dua? Allahumma inni abdu. The Prophet ﷺ started this dua by saying, Oh Allah, I am your slave. Acknowledging the reality, our reality, that we are the slaves of Allah. That's your job. That's my job, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And Allah is our master. And as such, we must obey Him, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. You love cigarettes so much, you love smoking so much. Allah said no. قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear the commands and we obey. We have no any position to argue with Allah the Creator. Hijab is good for your sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. It's difficult, it's hard, we acknowledge the challenges, but it is a command from Allah, we don't negotiate the commands of Allah. Allahumma inni abduk, wabnu abdik, and I am the son of your main slave, my father is a slave. Wabnu amatik, and my mother is your slave. Nasiyati biyadik, my forelock, my destiny, everything is in control of you, ya Allah. 
your judgment upon me is assured, is gonna pass. Adlun fiya qada'uk. Your destiny upon me is just. I deserve everything that you've written for me. Why Allah? Why the Prophet ﷺ is making this very long introduction? If you have noticed, he didn't ask Allah for anything yet. He's only making an acknowledgement of this reality, and then he goes on to say, "As'aluka bi kull ismin huwa lak." I ask you, Ya Allah, by every name you have named yourself with. أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلِّ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ سَمَّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسَكْ أَوْ أَنزَلْتَهُ فِي كِتَابِكْ Or you have revealed it in the book, in your book, in the Qur'an. أَوْ عَلَّمْتَهُ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْقِكْ Or you have taught it to any of your slaves. أَوْ اسْتَعْتَرْتَ بِهِ فِي عِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ عِنْدَكْ Or you have kept it hidden in the world of the unseen with you. Why, O oh Prophet of Allah, why are you making this very long introduction to ask Allah for one thing? And that's the secret of the dua. And taj'ala al-Qur'ana rabi'a qalbi. I beg you, Ya Allah, to make the Qur'an the spring of my heart and the light of my chest and the banisher of my sadness, depression and anxiety. Allahu Akbar. There are two secrets in this dua, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Number one, the dua itself, which the Prophet ﷺ told us to memorize it and to learn it. And number two is the Qur'an. Because there is no point to make that dua without actually having the Qur'an as your companion. Because the Prophet is asking Allah to make the Qur'an the spring of his life, the center of his attention, the compass that will guide him through in this dunya up until Jannatul Firdaus. Say Ameen. I didn't hear guys. Say Ameen. Wake me up UK please. Come on. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Now the problem is my brothers and sisters understand that along the journey of life there are so many things that we get exposed to that shut off that light of our hearts that come in between the Qur'an and ourselves. And apparently we enjoy these things for a little while, but it never satisfies us fully. It never makes us fulfilled really. One of those things is music. How many of you here are still listening to music and your favorite singers? Raise up your hand, do not worry, Mufti Mink is not here. <laughs> Yalla, raise up your hand. Be, be honest, inshallah. We wanted to see. Yani, Allah, nobody's going to judge you, Allah. Don't worry. I was a musician before. Originally, I was there, so don't worry, inshallah. <laughs> How many of you have heard those songs? Uh, this one very popular song, I remember. Uh, I believe I can fly. Yeah, I know you know it. Oh, my God. I know. Is somebody already singing it in his heart now? <laughs> somebody is ready to fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I said that before, this guy either a liar or a jinn. Because Allah says in the Quran, only jinn can touch the sky. Now by Allah, my brothers, my sisters, Islam, give me one benefit of listening to this. One benefit. Tell me what will you actually benefit from when listening to this other than just wasting your life away? How many of you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you are driving your car and you decided to listen to our Quran and after an hour drive maybe or more, you become bored. Then you inserted some Indian songs. <laughs> yeah? Or whatever else, Yani says. Right? And you felt that you are more entertained when you hear these songs and music than actually listening to the Quran. How many of you have heard a song and you cried? But you've been listening to the Quran for so many years, you never shed a tear. The reason is the light of your heart, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is shut because music, I also, I always say that, and I'm saying this by experience, and I want anyone to challenge me on this. Music is the only thing or one of the top things that competes with the Qur'an. 
Your heart cannot take both. Either the Quran or music. You choose. You decide. There was a song back in the days we used to give to our children. Movies and dolls. It's called, I am a Barbie. Man, I'm a guy. And I don't want to say it because it would appear as if I'm declaring what I had to be like. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life is what? Tell me. Huh? Tell me. Life is a, a plastic or something or fantastic, something like that. And then the worst part in that song, you can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We used to... We, <laughs> we used to give these songs to our children. And, and some people say, brother, you're so fanatic, man. These are dolls, brother, toys. Not anymore. Not anymore. Barbie is a real lady now. Everybody is looking at those movies. Not only that, we have a Barbie man now. His name is Kim. <laughs> and you hear those songs and those lyrics. Wallahi, our imaginations light up. Brother Ayman mentioned that I specialize in behavioral addictions. And one of the behaviors... Uh, you're interrupting the lecture, I will, I will deduct one minute. <laughs> and one of those behaviors, my brothers and sisters, is watching movies and sitcom and... How many of you here are still into movies? There's a behind, don't worry. Don't worry, Wallahi, don't worry. Fast and Furious, anyone? Fast and Furious? Ten parts, Allahu Akbar, ten. Ten movies, is it? Or nine or something? Ten. How many of you here love to drive cars? Raise up your hand. How many of those who love to drive cars have watched Fast and Furious? How many of those people who watch Fast and Furious and love to drive, imagine themselves driving like those actors? Allah, look at this. <laughs> The theory has been proven because our brain craves novelty. Our brain craves what? Novelty, imagination. So the moment you see a car flying from the train into the river and everybody's okay, no one is injured, mashallah. Then you start imagining yourself in that scene. There was a man by the name of Nicholas Templeton who had a 